Okay, so this week's chapter of One Piece, uh, we finally close one uh, plot line and continue two more. Uh, right now, the, the most inconsequential one is uh, Law, Luffy, uh, Kiros, and uh, Cavendish are still going up the wall trying to get to the third floor. And the only good thing that about that scene, with these this, these panels were the joke uh, where um, Kiros is saying, "I have a ten-year grudge against La Flamingo," and then Law's like, "Oh yeah, well, I can top that. I got a thirteen-year uh, grudge." And then Luffy, being the idiot that he is, is like, "Yeah, well, I got a thirty-year grudge." <laughs> this bullshit. You weren't even born yet. <laughs> but that one line was just enough for me to actually consider. Those panels not a waste of time. Just like okay, okay, <laughs> we still got room for comedy. I like that. You know, One Piece is known for its comedy. I like its comedy. I want to see more of it, even in the midst of uh, of war and battle and stuff like that. Uh, secondly, um, we finally closed the plot line of looking for Kinemon's samurai friend. And uh, yeah, I was like. I've been hearing about this guy since Punk Hazard. When is he going to show up? When are we going to see him? And for a while, I almost forgot that that was happening. You know, even even every now and then they mention like, Hey, I'm here for my friend. I'm here for my friend. But after a while, you start thinking like, Wait, you have a friend here? When does that happen? So, I'm glad we finally closed that plot line because... Uh, to a certain extent, it didn't seem that important, unless it's building up to Wano Country, which hopefully we'll get to see eventually. But anyway, we're introduced to the to the guy we've we've been looking for since Punk Hazard, and at first I thought he was a, he was gonna look like any generic samurai, exactly like Kinemon, dressed exactly like him, but he's not. He uh, how do I say this? He looks like one of those old-fashioned actors you would hear about in most uh, ancient times Japan TV shows or something like that you know the big long big big long hair pink probably the makeup the clothes and at first I was taken aback by that but uh, I'll be like okay you know what he just is weird whatever and uh, maybe his character is actually pretty cool. And to a certain extent, he is. We're just introduced to his powers, though. Not really his, his personality. Now, this is where it gets confusing. Because at one point, he says he was hiding in the wall. He probably fell down to the pit where all the toys are. And then he's like, you know, just blended into the wall or camouflage. Or maybe he can actually go into the wall. But then he said, I had nothing to worry about. Because with my ability, I can make food. The same way Kinemon can just make clothes out of random objects. So I'm trying to think, okay, so that's his devil fruit ability. But then he draws this giant bird, a badly drawn bird. He, he sucks as an artist. And it comes to life, and now he's able to write it. And it says it's his magic. Now, right then, right there, there's like three different abilities. One is camouflage, or maybe that's something he learned as a samurai. The other two, he can. He said he can make food, or he doesn't. He never has to worry about running out of food. Uh, so what exactly? Which one is his double fruit, or which one is actually magic from the Wano country? Who knows? I, I I'm just like, okay, I'm actually interested. I want to know more about this guy. I want to know more about the Wano country. Are all the samurais have devil fruit abilities, or this magic? Can they use it? Is that one of the reasons why no one ever tries to mess with that? With that place because of not just their skills as swordsmen but also because of their strange magic they have no idea what they're dealing with so that'd be very interesting uh i i actually can't wait to see kimono country now um but anyway the main focus of this chapter for at least from what i'm seeing was zoro versus pika and immediately i get the sense that pika is to a certain extent, a wimp, because every time Zoro just keeps like slashing through his attacks, Pika has his face like, oh my god, I mean, I can't believe this isn't working. It's like, dude, shouldn't you know your enemy or shouldn't you be expecting your enemy to be, to be incredibly strong? I mean, they're straw hats. They've become world famous for a reason, but he keeps getting surprised and almost like has this look of... Of anxiety, like, 
oh my god, I might lose. You know, I gotta keep pushing, uh, you know, getting back from this guy. So, I'm wondering exactly how strong is Pico without his ability. Because from what I'm seeing, he depends a little too much on it. Could it be? Could he be just another Devil Fruit user who uh, depends too much on Devil Fruit ability, too confident in it, and will end up uh, getting him killed in battle? Maybe I don't know. Uh, but then again, he's one of uh, the top executives, so he should be strong even without the Devil Fruit. So exactly why is he? Why does he look so nervous and almost scared of fighting Zoro? Uh, but anyway, you know, Robin. Uh, Rebecca and, uh, oh my god, there's so many names that I'm almost, I am just so bad at them. Uh, Bartolomeo, they're finally getting close, Pika sees them, he wants to take them down, he gets back into the giant titan uh, body, tries to smash him, but then Zoro just completely slashes right through the body. And I like, this is the line that made me one made me think, this is the main focus of the chapter, this is is what I should be looking for in One Piece, or at least in the specific part of One Piece. When Zoro says, A, even though Luffy and Law have the, are the ones with the bounties on their head in this game, you cannot underestimate me. I am going to be the world's greatest swordsman. I am Zoro. And the very last panel is just Pika just like, oh shit. It's like, yes, that is so badass. And then it makes me think about the title of this chapter. Uh, it's it, it's not to paraphrase. It's hello, nice to meet you, or it's nice to uh, uh, introduce. Uh, let me introduce me, myself. And it's so polite. But then when I think about it, it makes me feel like wait, is this Zoro's time to shine? Is this Zoro introducing himself to Pika? If so. The parallel of the the formal way of saying hello and introduce myself to Zoro's don't forget me don't don't you dare underestimate me motherfucker it's like <laughs> it's like that's hilarious uh, that is hilarious that is that is the Zoro I know and love so much but either way for me main focus was Zoro versus Pika and from the, what I'm seeing so far it looks like Zoro has Pika on the ropes. So maybe Pico isn't that big of a threat without his ability. Maybe he, or maybe he's just hiding something and holding back. Who knows? Because it would be disappointing to see Pico, one of the top executives, be taken down so easily, or at least scared so easily. Or maybe he's just getting mad. I don't know. But anyway, we finally meet Kinemon's friend. We've been hearing about him from Punk Hazard, which is sort of a big buildup for Wano Country. I can't wait for Wano Country. I'm hoping we get to see that soon. Uh, and of course, uh, Luffy's group still going up the wall, trying to get closer to Don Flamingo. But good joke there. There was a pretty good joke that I didn't mind that. Those uh, wasted panels. But either way, this was a great chapter. I loved it. Uh, I'm still hoping for the flashback, but if, they, if, we, if I keep getting chapters like this, I wouldn't mind. I don't mind getting chapters like this instead of a flashback. I can wait for a couple more weeks before I start thinking, you know, we really do need a backstory to a lot of these characters. But anyway, either way, uh, I'm Tony Dragon. Bye.